taught you business? Did you go to school for it, or you seem to be like well grounded? Is there some people that like uh, man, business? I wouldn't say I know business. Um, well, you are more structured, right, in how you approach things. Yeah, but I guess that comes with time. You know, that's just the, I, I've learned certain things because as much as I want to be great, I want to be working on these huge productions. I want to be creating these, you know, pieces that 10 20 years from now like wow like that that really sim signified and that really showed this arrow for what it was you know i get almost obsessed with trying to get there we're trying to be great we're trying to create um but one thing i've learned lately is just you can't cheat experience and you can't cheat time and certain things you just got to pay your dues and then you'll just gradually learn uh, i heard billy corbin say the other day on a podcast uh with joe rogan he said he no what was it enjoy fucking up because that's where you'll learn the most and i just had a rough week a couple weeks ago and i felt like it was one thing after another after another after another and it was just a snowball effect like monday through sunday it was just everything sucked but you know I always say life comes in waves, you know, you're going to have your mountain highs, you're going to have your valley lows, but at the end of the day, it always balances out, it's just you got to try to keep afloat, you know, sometimes I practice that not as great as I preach it, but in reality, um, enjoy your mistakes, try to correct them, but don't obsess over them because with the mistakes, there's that growing curve. There's that learning curve. You went through this so you can learn that so that in the next opportunity the next opportunity of this, you're set. You're good. Oh, I, I remember that. Oh, yeah, I, I remember when I messed that one up. Oh, man, I remember when I went to the shoot well, without a battery. Oh, I remember when I went to a shoot without a card. Like, those dumb rookie mistakes or whatever, you learn from it, you know? Um, and I guess to what you were saying about leadership, like, preparing your team with that, you know? You want to lead them. You don't want to just order them. And with the point of being assertive, like you could be assertive without just being a dick or without being rude. There's always that. You want to make sure your team wants to work with you. And if people are, are working with me just to earn a dollar, like I don't need you. You know, I'll find somebody else. But I want people to be around. You know, I want people that want to create, that want to do this. Um, and it's funny, man, like, I just remember I was working at a restaurant um, on like by Sunset Place, and I just kept introducing to people, uh, introducing myself to people. Hi, I'm Vince. I'm a photographer. Hi, I'm Vince. I'm a photographer. And the was like, I'm introducing myself as a photographer, and I'm here working at a restaurant. This this doesn't add up. Granted, I was young, you know, at my mom's place, so I could afford to to make that jump. I'm like, ah, screw it. I don't need to be here. I was always hard headed in that sense, but. I think that's the thing. I, I don't know. I actually just heard something somebody say yesterday. Uh, chase opportunity and take your passion with you, which is great. <laughs> but there's a reason why I'm not working a nine to five. There's a reason why I'm not in corporate America. I could have been an accountant. I could have been a dentist. I could have been, um, uh, what's it called? Whatever. Point is, I could have done so many other things. This is the only thing I can do. This is the only thing I'm passionate about. Um, That's funny. It sounded like they wanted to get rid of you and get rid of all of you. <laughs> Do you think and take your passion with you? <laughs> we don't want it. You're not sure. <laughs> it's supposed to be uplifting or inspirational. I just, I was you looking are. at it and I was like, eh. but you know, maybe they're right. What do I know? Yeah. So there was a lot of wisdom and gems that you dropped. Um, it was interesting getting to know young Vince and his pursuits you had trials and tribulations a lot of gems that we just taught and, and it was really interesting so to get to where you are now i know that careers they you know there's haters there's not supporters there's you know obstacles is there anything that you had to overcome to give you that fortitude that strength for you to carry on to your ambitions and your drive yeah myself <laughs> i had to overcome myself i was a uh... I went through a pretty pretty intense depression for a good amount of years. Um, that really sucked. Um, 
to in a short piece i mean how would you communicate that as a creative about because mental health is a very important issue but someone who is um well eloquent in his his, his ability to communicate it I and mean, being a visual artist can where you, like, my depression it was it was just long and like it definitely i know what it was I, like i feel like when i'm talking to people i know what it's like i try to be somewhat sensitive to that when i can be you know um i went through depression for i want to say a good four to five years um found myself really involved at church i mean funny enough i first picked up my camera when i first started going to church so i feel like there's a very spiritual like connection with that with what i do uh, which is why it's like this is what I do because I know God provided for me to do that for whatever reason it may be that's that's what I'm here for um, and yeah man I mean that depression sucked and then it's funny because I know like they say uh, the greatest art comes from you know tortured souls and all that stuff about the tortured artists and I can't really allude to that. All I could say is that when I was going through my depression, I was listening to a lot of these like podcasts, um, Malcolm Gladwell, things like that. And one thing that really stuck to me was just about like to achieve mastery at anything you need to put in the 10,000 hours of work. And then my logic was, you know, if I'm pursuing my passion and if it's what I do for work, but because it's my passion, I'll do it from a nine to five, but then also I'm gonna be doing it after that nine to five. Five till, I'll still be like doing it. I'll still be like reading up on it because uh, I would just obsess over it. So I just figured like, I need to put in the work that no one else is gonna do. I need to work harder than everybody in the room um, and just fully commit myself to that so that I could try to just do as much as I can and just prepare myself for whatever it may be on its way. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I don't, know, I don't want to make it sound like it was so intense or so deep. Um, uh, but I did, I did go through a pretty severe depression for a good amount of years and it's a personal struggle that you had to overcome. So don't try to belittle, you know, the obstacles, or eh, like eh, the, the, but like, don't, it, be, it's what I went through. I just, I wouldn't say it's all that, um, now that. I guess now, looking through it, looking back, um, there's just so much more out there. There are more severe problems than just me in my head, you know? Um, yeah, I'd rather not talk about this. So we'll just jump to something else. So, I know that there's photo walks, and then there's, like, opportunities for people that aren't experienced to meet more um expertise i know that Wu um didn't i did an episode with Wu. great conversation super fun and so insightful he's been that source of light for a lot of people you know being humble i remember that we were having a conversation it was just like it's cool that someone can be like yo you introduced me to photography because of the way that you captured something visually but then there's also you like thank you because you introduced me to god and having such like a spiritual figure in my life and when i needed it was way more important than like any like and he's like yo that right there compared to taking like the dopest photo or the dopest edit of like my vacation or of this brand or something that right there is like to the top because it's like who who really is like who can say that you know like i was lost and i needed help and because you're such a cool person like i decided to give it a shot and then it's just like yo i i i love this you know you don't know what um what light someone can give to you sometimes uh, through this journey that i've learned sometimes the flame goes out but you still got a lot of wax and it takes someone else outside looking in to, you know, who still has that fire that can relight your fire. I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot. And 
I put my 10,000 hours of saying stupid stuff just so like when the right moment comes, I say a lot of smart things. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> I think a podcast is perfect for me. No, it's it's important that coming across from where we are now, it's like you had to diversify. Maybe you're shooting something in the beginning, let's say like couples or shooting your dog or shooting drinks or something like that. And that creativity to be like, I can shoot this in so many different ways have translated into how you shoot your work. You know, it's just like, I can do this at artistically in so many different ways that I see things that most people don't see. Most people use their iPhones nowadays and it's like, if I can use my iPhone, why do I need my camera? You know, they don't, you know, when we talk about execution and then turnaround, it's like McDonald's. Like if I can do it off of my phone, cheap, fast and quick, like why do I need a professional like you? How do you feel nowadays with social media? Do you think people try to coin the word entrepreneur like for sh- like for show like do you think that it's hurtful or helpful to a creative like yourself social media can be really great and social media can be really whack um, I think it's just the day and age that we're in right now being that we're in the the gig economy the freelance economy um, truth be told, I mean, when I was at FIU, I was like obsessed with like, I need to get work at an agency. That's the only way I'm going to make money as a creative. Like if I don't do this, what am I going to do for work? Like, how am I going to get paid? Like I would just go down that rabbit hole. Um, and then truth be told, like I'll be on LinkedIn every now and then looking at different video jobs, you know, whether local or, you know, out of state, whatever. Um, but ultimately like this is what was presented to me. This is the situation I found myself in. I just need to do the absolute most to better myself. But with social media, I mean, when used right, there's so much good that it can do. Um, you know, when done wrong, you know, between, I, I just, I can't even imagine being a high school kid right now with Twitter and Facebook, or no, Facebook's been dead, but basically with like Instagram and Snapchat and just how like that is as a regular routine thing. I remember I'm 25 growing up, like I remember the whole MySpace and you know, Facebook and Twitter and just like kind of growing through these things, but it was still kind of new technology. Whereas, like, I look at someone like my sister, then it's like, oh, like she's. That, that was already normal for her growing up. Um, I mean, the beautiful thing with social media is like, well, you know how to utilize it. Your audience is far, far. it's not even far and few, your audience is worldwide. You know, you can make a video, put it on Twitter. If it's impactful enough where you're, I'm gonna laugh, impactful enough where you're gonna get something out of it, you retweet it. That retweet leads to another retweet and another one and another one, and then you could wake up the, the next day and just, Oh, my video has been shared 30,000 times. That's the power of social media. But I feel like a lot of social media is look at me, look at this, look how awesome I am, look how cool this is. You know, by all means, you know, I know that there's plenty of people that are making a living like that. So if it works for them, you know, God bless, you know. But if we could get rid of that vanity there's so much good that could be done with it. I mean, I forgot what it was. Uh, damn, I don't know if it was Ethiopia. No, I'm not even gonna try to butcher this country, but there's been so many uprisings through political le- like movements. Like Venezuela? Venezuela right now, well, they're still going through it. Yeah. Um, but stuff that basically with dictatorship, with, with an oppressive leader, you know, we're just basically at the time that information can't be held back. And that's so powerful. That's why you can go on YouTube and you can learn how to do camera stuff. Let me learn how to like, you know, fix my car. Let me learn how to fix my brake, whatever, whatever. 
we're in the day and age that honestly you can learn to do anything at your fingertips and I think that's just so incredible because if you think of it like that it might change how you're gonna perceive to create if you know you're gonna cre be creating something that's gonna inspire that's gonna motivate influence that's a game changer you know but then there's that trap of like oh me 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 you know but if we could push that to the side there's just so much that we can do with social media and i always wonder like what's it gonna look like in the next five years ten years what's it gonna be like you know my kid my grand my grandchild like going through school reading through it in the history books you know we're writing this now we're not gonna know the effects of this for another 20 30 years but like i said there's so much I hate to say power because that's going to sound like I'm going to be giving social media influencers like another pedestal, <laughs> but at the end of the day, they're creating leverage. I mean, definitely creating like leverage. Digitally. Like I was uh, explaining with uh, Maria, like if my dad calls, oh, what are you doing? I'm on a podcast. Said, yes. Okay. Oh, it's a radio show. And then it got me thinking like a podcast is really a talk show. Yeah. Here we are downtown Miami putting this out. You know, 20, 30 years ago, the only time you could happen, have that is Larry King Live, getting on a radio, an actual radio show, things like that. But now we have the capabilities of not only are we recording it, not only are we lighting it, not only are we filming it, but we're going to be broadcasting it. And distributing. And, and distributing. distributing. So yeah. there's what, no gatekeepers, as Gary Vee said. You know, it's just it's wild to know that anything you put out there could go from 10 views to 10 million you know so i think that's the power of social media is just creating something that kind of like with cinema what i was talking about if you could elicit something that that has an emotional response an emotional reaction that that's it that that's that might be the secret to social media to inspire the few and the many but think of the one the person that needs this wisdom or wants this wisdom and it's available to them at the time that they need it sometimes i say to myself that it's not what you say is how you say it like many people but it's like it's not just what you say and how you say it it's who were you when it needed to be said were you that person that was trying to gain it for yourself or were you just trying to, like I said, light someone's candle? You know, someone, someone's, you know, wick went out and try to inspire it. Yeah, you spark that flame one more time. Yeah. Get them lit. Not like that. <laughs> So I hope you guys love this video and the videos that I have been producing. Let's go. I love the people. I love the guests. If there's any feedback that you would like to give me, please let me know in the comments below. Yes. If you can please subscribe. If there's any way that I can improve on it, let me know. I would be glad to hear it. And I also want to know what's on your mind. This is an ongoing conversation. Let's go. I want to you know, understand you guys more. I want to provide more value, more content for you. So if there's anything that I can do, just please let me know. I'll gladly help out to the best of my abilities to provide you this content. You're crushing it, bro. Let's go. Ha, 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 ha.